Today on the spot, Tor Thorson updates you with the latest headlines, and we get the new releases hitting store shelves. Finally, Sean McInnes drops in for a lengthy demo of all the maps in the Halo Reach Noble Map Pack. Today on the spot. Welcome, folks, to another episode of Today on the Spot. I'm your host, Chris Waters. I got my co-host, Sophia Tong, here joining me on the last day of November. I know. I can't believe it's over. It's coming to a close. All those games behind us, almost. Almost. A couple big ones coming out this week. We've got reviews going up for Gran Turismo 5, Epic Mickey. Golden Sun, another one. Golden Sun, the fan favorite coming back on the DS. Yes. Are, did you, are you a Golden Sun sort of cult follower? Or? I had the original Golden Sun, but I never really finished it. But mm -hmm. I have. I am very excited about this new one. Very cool. Yes. We've also got some interviews and demos on the show, as you saw, as you heard at the top of the show. But uh, we're going to start it off with the news team and the latest headlines. Take it away, guys. Hey, everybody. It's your GameSpot news update for Tuesday, November 30th. I'm Tor Thorson. Sales numbers, sales numbers, sales numbers. Hot on the heels of Nintendo's announcement that it had sold 1.5 million units of hardware over the Black Friday Thanksgiving weekend, Microsoft has struck back with some sales numbers of its own. On Monday, the software giant said that its Kinect motion sensing system has sold 2.5 million units worldwide in its first 25 days on the market. The peripheral's milestone comes in the wake of a reported $500 million marketing campaign to promote the device. Microsoft said the Kinect was on track to sell 5 million units by year's end, in line with the company's previously announced target. The system went on sale in North America on November 4th, with its European rollout occurring on November 10th, and its Japanese release following on November 20th. Sony didn't take long to fire back, announcing new sales figures for its motion control technology, PlayStation Move. Since debuting in mid-September in North America and Europe, and in October in Japan, the PlayStation Move controller, not the entire system, has sold over 4.1 million units worldwide. Sony did not announce sales figures for other Move components, such as the PlayStation Eye or Navigation Controller. The PlayStation Move launched in Europe on September 15th, North America on September 17th, and in Japan on October 21st. The system consists of the aforementioned LED Cat 1 controller and the PlayStation Eye camera, and is available in a variety of configurations. Controllers are sold on their own for $50, bundled with a PlayStation Eye camera and minigames compilation Sports Champions for $100, and all that and a 320GB PlayStation 3 for $400. Well, that's it. Your GameSpot news update for Tuesday, November 30th. For more headlines, head on over to news.gamespot.com. Well, we mentioned some of the big games coming out this week at the top of the show. Let's hear the full list this week on new releases. Leading the charge this week is Junction Point's Wii exclusive Disney Epic Mickey. Due out on Tuesday, the title combines elements of the action adventure, role playing, and platforming genres. Epic Mickey sees Disney's storied mouse braving the dreary bluffs of the Wasteland, an alternate dimension populated by a variety of characters from Disney's stable. Mickey must restore the Wasteland with the aid of his trusty paintbrush. With the tool, players are able to alter the way the world looks, painting in some areas while thinning others. Carrying a $50 price tag for the Standard Edition, Epic Mickey will also be available in a $70 package. The Collector's Edition includes a 5-inch Epic Mickey figurine, an Epic Mickey-themed skin for the Wii, and a behind-the-scenes bonus video. Gamers looking to take their gaming on the go this week can pick up Golden Sun Dark Dawn exclusively for the DS. Dark Dawn asks players to save a reborn world from impending catastrophe with the help of Jin. The Jin are magical spirits that can be used to call upon the power of the gods whether it's to wipe out enemies or circumvent obstacles and solve puzzles. The third game in the Golden Sun series, Dark Dawn is set 30 years after the events of the original Game Boy Advance titles. Racing fans this week can pick up Nailed, a multi-platform title due out Tuesday from Deep Silver. Nailed marks the publisher's first foray into the off-road racing genre and lets players speed around numerous environments either on the seat of an ATV or a dirt bike. Gamers will compete in areas like the Mediterranean seafront, a misty wooded forest, an arctic glacier, and an active volcano. Those willing to put their life on the line to catch crabs can pick up Deadliest Catch Sea of Chaos this week for the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and Wii. From Crave, the title is based on the popular television show, 
and follows 2008's coldly received deadliest catch, Alaskan Storm. Sea of Chaos sports 10 distinct campaign options where players must tackle a number of feet, including going head to head against Captain Sig Hansen's Northwestern to see who can catch the most crab in a single season when there are no other boats on the water. The title also includes a number of mini games where players will collect crab pots, unload the hull, and finally sort the crustaceans. For further details on the week's games, visit GameSpot's new releases page. Release dates are based on retailer listings and are subject to change. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for our daily demo. I've replaced Sophia Tong with Sean McInnes using Alchemy, a science unknown to you modern uh, video game players, but known to me. Sean, before, you are an I keep alchemy expert. <laughs> before I keep rambling on, what are we here to play? Chris, we are here to play the new Halo Reach Noble map pack that just came out today. Yeah. Yeah. I'm playing it now, so apologies in advance to people whose game I quit out of in the interest of making this demo more interesting for you folks at home. These are the sacrifices I make for you. And I hope I don't get temporarily suspended. <laughs> That'll be good too. <laughs> so the, the first map that we're gonna check out here is Anchor 9, and which is appropriate because it's like the smallest map of the bunch. This is the, um, it's a great map for Slayer, which is good because we've got Slayer DMR going on here. And this one, it's, it's very close quarters. This is the type of map where you're never far from a conflict. Go ahead and jump out here. Now jump what? up. You will find that... Uh -oh. Also, you just make sure no, you no. don't jump into space. You I got have my jetpack. Jet it's cool. Okay, good. I'm gonna get this hey, there's a little Easter egg right there, that, uh, that rocket launcher. Oh, hey, hey, jerk. So this is um, sort of inspired by the campaign mission that takes place in an orbital docking facility. Okay. I really hope you don't re-enter orbit here. That is no, going to be bad. It's going to be cool. That's cool. <laughs> so yeah, oh. when you're outside the the docking bay, there's uh, very low gravity, so you can jump. I mean, you don't even need a jetpack. You can just jump, and you're flying around. The jetpack was what kept me from flying off yes. into oblivion. Yes. So the jetpack certainly helps. Um, so yeah, as you can tell by the carnage that's going <laughs> on here, this is the type of map where you're never far from a scuffle. You can easily walk in and pick up some leftovers from uh, two people fighting out. You just finish off the second guy, but at the same time, other people are never far from you as well. So it's a, it's a small scale, symmetrical map that's geared towards uh, Slayer matches. Um, it's also, it also works well for you know, multi-CTF because it is symmetrical. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's a type of map where I found a lot of success when I was playing it using a shotgun because it's really close quarters. Um, More success than I'm finding, which is zero success. <laughs> zero success. Come on. Kill a blue guy. At least one. You can do it. Oh, that one. Oh. <laughs> He's right around here. Oh, get that guy. Yeah! Nice! Oh! oh. Okay, that's fine. Nice. <laughs> nice work there. You Take got one steaming. out of four on your path towards T-Hug It Out. <laughs> All right. Uh, so is this enough of Anchor 9 here? Should we jump over to another map? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, a, it's a fairly small scale it map. Definitely we saw is. We saw the major feature, which is the zero gravity outside area. Um, but yeah, this is, this is Anchor 9 in a nutshell. Some of the other maps are quite a bit bigger, so we should maybe devote a little bit more of our time to those. You so. got it. All right, so with a little bit of movie magic, we have switched over from Anchor 9 to our second map of the demo. This one is Tempest, which is, you know, in keeping with the, um, the theme that we've got going, we went from the smallest map to the medium-sized map of the bunch. This one yeehaw, is... Ooh. Yeehaw, yeehaw, good decision-making. <laughs> nice work, buddy. You are just, wow. You're like a mongoose expert. You couldn't... <laughs> you drove right past that guy. You barely grazed him. The trick is to murder him. My, oh, okay. I'll keep um, that in mind while I go poke around and check out this map. <laughs> so, yeah. Can so, Tempest is kind of my personal favorite nope. of the bunch. Um, I just really like the the setting here. It's it's right along the beach, and it's got a really interesting layout because you've got these... Chris, if you could turn to your left, Whoop. you've got these, um, big, you, these big bases, these uh, big forerunner architecture bases, mm -hmm. and they're sitting immediately across from each other. If you could go into like that middle area between those two bases... Like where this big rock is? Yeah, there's sort of a big ridge connecting the two bases, and it's sloped on either side. So it, it creates this interesting situation where there's always a big scuffle on the ridge and then a little bit um, a little bit less chaos on the side there so you kind of know where to where to get into a fight if you want to get into one but at the yeah. same time you know where to escape from conflict if you want to do that as well 
So this is, this one works really well with um, with CTF matches. Uh -oh. Ooh, if you're looking for a, an objective-based game mode, it also works really well with Headhunter, which is the map where you collect flaming skulls from your downed enemies. And it's interesting because Chris, if you go down there to your right, because of the layout and the geometry, the skulls just sort of tumble down into that creek. Oh, really? And you can just run around. You don't even have to kill people. You just run and collect the flaming skulls that tumble down into the creek and avoid conflict and <laughs> just score like that. Just mop it up. Yeah, and, you, and so you just mop it up. So there's kind of interesting strategies to be found here. Um, but there also are a number of vehicles on this one. Um, like the mongoose be, I was driving around so inexpertly earlier. Yeah, there's the mongoose, there's the warthog, and vehicles are kind of funny on this map because you'll be down on one side of that slope and take off and launch over to the other side of the slope only to find out that there's like, you know, a million people there duking it out. That sounds Grenades fun. exploding left and right. So this one, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very dynamic map for being a sort of... On it the is. surface, a very symmetric map with uh, with team bases there. But yeah, it gives the impression of a lot of uneven terrain. Yeah, yeah, and I enjoy it. And you've got that nice view off in the distance of that uh, Forerunner architecture yeah, back there. Yeah, you can there. see sort of the halo arcing. Yeah. What is this, Sean? This is, this is the other team's base. You're in, um, what are we, oh, this is another Slayer DMR match. So, um, so yeah, there's, so that's just there's a lot of loops. There's also like a nice cool. little secret cave tunnel if you go s just sort of go straight towards that red dude and off to the left you can see yeah Yeehaw! you can see these cave tunnels so <laughs> there's a lot of different approaches uh to the to the team bases you can be sneaky you can take off in a vehicle and sort of like flank the base from the side and there's these little uh pathways here this uh yeah this this map is a lot of fun i enjoy it quite a bit um, but it looks like on this game mode there are no warthogs, which is unfortunate. No warthogs. No warthogs. And Chris getting no kills. Chris By the way, no it is kills. forbidden to judge me on my Halo <laughs> skill. <laughs> you know, this is I'm just doing this so you guys can yeah. see. Oh, at uh, least kill Randolph Titler. Nope. You couldn't kill Randolph from Titler. the grave. Uh, no, nope. Nothing. Didn't, didn't work out. These are all. We should probably mention that these are all guys who bought the map pack day one, like hour one. So these are like the most devoted, expert Halo fans. Okay, I got that. And it doesn't game. help that Chris sucks. Hey, what, what did I say before about the judging? <laughs> With the judging? I, I should, that avoid, guy I should avoid doing the judging. Yeah. Go ahead, come out of your armor lock. It will be fun for everyone. The armor lock is really handy on this map when you've got warthogs. It'll be fun for me. Because you've got like warthogs just flying up one slope, and then you can just hang out at the top with your armor lock, and they don't really see you there until it's too late. Until they explode. And they explode into lots of teeny little bits. This is pretty. Yeah, it's a nice looking map. So yeah, so that's uh, that is a quick look at Tempest. Now, let's go take a look at that third and final map of the bunch. You got it. Okay, and this is it, the, uh, the third map of the bunch. This one is called Breakpoint, and it is by far the biggest map of, of them all. Um, we're playing a little big team Slayer right here, so Chris is free to just sort of roam around and give us, give us a tour of the map, but, uh, but also hopefully kill tunnel. at least one person this time. That's, you know, I've been killing at least one person. <laughs> at least one person. And oh, getting, hey, first strike. I got strike. the first strike. Nice. Went out of the way early. You got 18 whole credits for that one. So, um, yeah, go ahead and give us a look of that distant terrain there, and you can get, like, a nice Yikes. sense of this map's scale, which is quite large. You can see a warthog over there. Mm -hmm. um, this, this map, we're playing on, we're playing uh, Slayer right here, but this is actually a map um, that, was with, that was designed for invasion game types. I'm going to run away from there. <laughs> Nope, so, um, thanks a lot, camp and shotgun guy. Can't <laughs> so come to my rescue. Yeah, so it actually starts um, uh, off on the other side of the map. There's this big sloped hill, and the uh, the attacking team comes down and they try to uh, capture these two um, control points. And then after that, on this side of the map, they try to destroy the doors um, on this big building, which you can see right over there. It's that big sort of this guy slope building. There's two doors on the side that they're trying to capture an object, and then, Chris, if you could turn left. Can I get this ghost first? Yeah, go Take ahead. Take us on a magical mystery tour? On a magical mystery tour. Okay. This is definitely the most vehicle-heavy right, map which of way bunch. do you want me to go? Go here? down this Yikes. way. Oh, straight down here. And so, once the, the third and final objective for the attacking team is to uh, plant, uh, plant the object right there, and then they win. So that's how it works in Invasion. You know, Bungie, they got a lot of feedback from fans that were like, hey, 
Invasion is awesome. We need more game modes. Need more or more maps. maps for that mode. Yeah. Yeah, this one is certainly big. I was poking around on it earlier. There's just and there's a bunch of different ways to get from one side of the map to the other. You saw that big tunnel earlier. Yeah, the there's like little sort of underground passageways in the middle there. The whole map is essentially one big loop where you we saw you go through the like the big vehicle tunnel earlier and mm -hmm. just a moment ago you were down along those sort of docking points at the bottom. And so the, the, the whole map is one big loop with some little underground sneaky corridors in the middle. Oh, kill, kill that guy. Kill him. Kill him. Nice. You got it. I think I also nice. killed my buddy. <laughs> oh, uh, necessary evil. Might have been a stray bullet there. <laughs> Sorry, Juanito. So some of the strategies in this map is you just load up a, a Warthog and you just do laps of, around this big loop like you were playing NASCAR, only instead of a regular NASCAR vehicle, you have a turret mounted to it and you're murdering people. That sounds like a pretty fun uh, <laughs> I pretty would like to time. see that in NASCAR. I would watch a lot more of it. And you can get up on top of this thing. I didn't here. actually know you could get up here. This is a first for me. I've never seen anybody do this. So obviously it's Sean. a good sniping map if you've got a sniper rifle and you're just perched you're up here. You up here and you're like, oh yeah, hey, what's up, buddy? I don't know where I'm <laughs> shooting you from, but it's happening to you. And um, oh, this is also a map where in certain game types you can get um, you can get the Falcon. So Speaking you can, of snipers. Oh, God. That was a real sniper. He wasn't trying to snipe with a DMR. Uh, you can actually get, like, you know, you can get the Banshee up there. You can get the Falcon up there so that snipers are kept honest. Um, and it's also a map where you can uh, jump into the Wraith. And depending on the game mode, where everybody's attention is drawn to like one area, you can sneak up on them with a wraith and just like murder nine different people at once. Which I is like nice. your strategies. <laughs> yeah. What you think about that? <laughs> so yeah, it is a map because of the layout that allows for some interesting strategies. But might I present the or suggest the strategy of don't die? Don't die. Yeah. Sean, I mean, a lot of the stuff you've been talking about has been pretty complex yeah. and involves the coordination of, and of teamwork and reading the battlefield. Mm -hmm. But don't die. I mean, that's a tall order. That is a tall this order. This is a game about killing and being killed. Or at the very least, commit to excellence. Oh, get one more. Nice. Tea, tea hug it out. out. Oh, you didn't get that uh, that first tea hug it out. That's because I quit. Because you quit that. Folks. that I'm sullying hug. my <laughs> unbelemished <laughs> online <laughs> reputation. <laughs> For you. For you. Oh boy. Yeah, this isn't. When does the shame and humiliation end? I mean, the compelling content we're creating. Oh. Hey, hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Mount that. <laughs> mantle it. Come on. You got to mantle that wraith. Don't get killed by it. You got to mantle it. See, where was that pro tip earlier <laughs> on when I was like, you know, it's going to be great? <laughs> get shot by this dude. Um, yeah, this, this map tends to be a little bit more chaotic on uh, big. on. Um, you know, Slayer matches because of all the vehicles, and it's it's very easy to get killed right away. But if it's a more objective-oriented match like uh, Invasion, then um, you can stay alive a little. You longer. can you can stay alive a little bit longer, yeah. Oh god, is this where I do like the James Bond Golden Eye jump? Where you just leap off the edge? Is this how or we're going like, to end the demo? See you later. <laughs> <laughs> so long, everybody. Don't kill for you. You didn't know I had a jetpack. Oh, nice. To the snowy abyss. Great work, Chris. Hey, thanks. <laughs> you know, I like to end it with style. I exactly. That's uh, that's how you do things. Sean, thanks for the walkthrough. Sure. You have, you have a comprehensive knowledge of these maps. My pleasure. Excellent. And with the daily demo concluded, it's on with the show. And now we've arrived at possibly your favorite part of the show, or, you know, maybe your second favorite. <laughs> it's trivia time! Yes, we have Sonic the Hedgehog 4, 20 codes to give away. So, the question I have for you is, now, Sonic the Hedgehog 4 is a sequel that was 16 years in the making. Now, with that in mind, how old is Sonic himself? Now, if you have the answer, you can email us at onthespot at gamespot.com or send us the answer in the answer trivia button on the side of the page. And to be, sh to be, so the folks out there are certain, these codes are for... Xbox Live Arcade. Xbox Live Arcade. Hmm. Yes, 20 of them. Note it. Yes. 20 is a lot. That's I good know. odds. Yeah. yeah so you, just send the answer. The folks are in for some winning. <laughs> and that about brings us to the end of our show, folks. Thanks for joining us. It's been fun. Yes, it has been. It's been enjoyable. Uh, Thursday, we got a special guest coming in. 
from GameSpot's past, the legendary Greg Kasavin, That's who you right. might recognize from such Editor's Choice Awards <laughs> as this one. Look at That's that. That's pretty funny. He's actually on the podcast today, you know, our weekly podcast called The Hot Spot. Yeah. So you guys can check it out. Talking about his new game, Bastion, and he'll be here on our Thursday episode of Today on the Spot. Hope you can join us, folks. For everyone here in the GameSpot studios, I'm Chris Waters. I'm Sophia Tong. Have a great week. Oh, it's Tristan. <laughs> I'm very excited right now. He had a lot of turkey this weekend. Oh, He's yeah. it. I'm doing um, acapella Halo theme music. Your heart out, Marty O'Donnell. I could do your entire job without an orchestra.